Well, there were some things I wanted to rectify. Oh, that's not the right word. Recti rectum? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> wrong way, wrong way. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly, here today with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8. And when we do these interviews, we are after excellence, and this next queen did it better than anyone. Yes, on season nine, she famously, to quote her, came in first, um, on the elimination chart, that is. But her career after the show has been such a joy to watch. So please say hello to the divine Miss James Mansfield. Welcome. Oh my God, thank you so much. I thought I told you, don't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That voice is just, uh, love it. Oh, thank you. I've been told it's, what's that word? Grating? It sounds like a good word. I don't know what it means, but. Grating. It's... Like cheese, you grate it. Yeah, yeah. Wisconsin. It all makes sense. <laughs> Full circle. It really is truly wonderful to see you back in this competition. It's always surprising to me that you went home first back on season nine because you've become such a fan favorite queen. You have such a following. It's It's been really great to watch you. Uh, so what was that like, though, having gone through through that whole experience, going home first, and what kind of obstacles do you think that placed on your career afterwards? I mean, at first it was your usual trial and tribulations of being devastating, horrible, you know. I didn't know how to go, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Actually, like, it was a nice kick in the rear because I went on RuPaul's Drag Race to give myself a boost and get out of Wisconsin, and I did. And it was honestly just the push I needed to like push right on stage and start performing, make mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah. So yeah. it was the drive I needed to just start making my own career for myself. And mm -hmm. I vowed that what they did not get to see on the show, I would make sure they saw everywhere else. Yeah, and they have. You have done a lot. We're going to talk about Who Stole Christmas later because oh, I, I, I mean, if anybody has not watched that, you, what is wrong with you? Because it is, uh, James stole the show on that movie. You really need to watch it. Um, Thank you. Of course. What was your goal going into All Stars 8? Was there certain things that you maybe wanted to prove to the fans um, this time around versus your first time around? Well, there were some things I wanted to rectify. Oh, that's not the right word. Rect rectum? No. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> wrong way, wrong way. Well, there were some things that I wanted to like, you know, just put out there and try and do over again because when I got on Drag Race the first time, I was what you call a baby queen. Mm -hmm. I literally lied on my audition tape and said I could do a million things that I could not she do. Can't. <laughs> but I learned somewhat how to do some of those things. Now like, I'm coming back with a much stronger arsenal of things to use in a competition. Mm -hmm. So I honestly feel really, really good about everything that happened. What did you lie about being able to do? Well, I was just like in my audition tape, like you don't understand, I'm a fierce dancer. <laughs> I'm an amazing lip syncer. Like everything that drag queens should probably know how to do a little bit. I was like, I'm a great makeup artist, but they saw the makeup, so I don't know how they got me. <laughs> They're like, maybe it was a rough day that day, who knows? Did anybody say to you when you got on set, like, James, like your audition tape, remember when you said you could do all these things? You can't? No one ever called me out for it, but thankfully, you know, I managed to correct those things now. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, come on, look at the material. I mean, truly. It's stretch satin? No, it doesn't stretch. It's just satin. Just satin. Just, just regular satin. satin. What, what do you think is the biggest thing that has changed about you since your original season, though? I have to say that I'm just more comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. I was kind of pushed out there at a very tender age of 26 mm -hmm. that I was able to be so shy back then, but I feel like I'm very much like open and honest and I don't care what anyone thinks now. Mm -hmm. I'll say whatever I want. That yeah. top is interesting. Interesting. I'm gonna be read by all of these queens <laughs> in these interviews, I can tell, yeah. And it's painful though too. It's is like it chain really? link, it's painful. I made such a wrong decision today, yeah. Is it actually chain mail? It's like, well, it's like cheap, fast fashion chain mail. Well, I mean, it's fine, you know. Renaissance, fine, Renaissance. Fine, Put that on my, my tombstone, yeah, just fine. <laughs> just It'll fine. do. <laughs> I've always wanted to ask you this. Have you ever, in your original season and this season, were you ever afraid that Mariska Hargitay was gonna be a guest judge? Actually, not really. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like she would like me, because yeah, everyone likes yeah, me. Yeah. But like, I don't know, I've only heard few stories about Mariska Hargitay. Mm -hmm. There was one story I got at DragCon, where tell they it. told me, yeah, I coached for Mariska Hargitay's soccer team for her son, oh. and I tried to mention you to her, and she didn't seem very interested. I was like, <gasps> That's iconic. I love that. <laughs> oh, I kind of love that. Like a soccer mom who doesn't have the time. <laughs> but imagine how many gay guys come up to her and say, yeah, I know this Drake when it does your mom. She's mm -hmm. like, sure they do. Yeah. They all do. Yeah, yeah. So you haven't heard from her ever? No. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to contact her? Not her or any of Jane's children. Although like, I know they're all in the LA area and I think yeah. one of her sons lives in Vegas. So if I wanted my house, I want to buy a house. He's a real estate agent. 
She knows. <laughs> she has done the research. I know. I know who to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fans also have long speculated or like dreamed about having like an early out season. So how do you think you would fare in the context of that versus like a group of queens like All Stars Eight? I always got my name tossed in that conversation, but I always stuck to this where I like the fact that I was cast in the season as a competitor mm -hmm. and it wasn't just the gimmick of I went home first. Right. They saw me as a competitor, which Definitely. I think is the ultimate show of respect. Absolutely, no, and you deserve that respect, yeah, because as you said, I mean, I think a lot of people uh, tend to think that like your position on Drag Race is indicative of your entire career, but you are proof that like, you know, going home first, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. You're still a star. You, Kamora Hall, I mean, all these queens that have gone home first have just done well, so many great I mean, things. Well, not so much Kamora Hall, but I'm kidding, I'm Hocus kidding, Hocus I'm Hocus kidding! Hocus Pocus 2 star Kamora <laughs> Hall? Are you She's kidding? a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I dog her out all the time, though it's one of my favorite pastimes. I'll just text her <laughs> randomly really yeah. hateful things. <laughs> <laughs> like what was the last hateful thing you said to Kamora Hall? I have to see my phone. I think it was like, hey Kamora, I hope your face collapses or something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Something nice. Not, yeah, just to wish her well on Hocus Pocus 2. You're like, I hope your face collapses. Yeah, it's like, oh, hope you remember your one line. Yeah, you know, those kind of nice things. She delivered that one line <laughs> with the most charisma I've ever seen anybody deliver one line before. Who says she's not an actress? She is definitely an actress. Although Cornbread did tell me that she literally stayed up the entire night beforehand going over 17,000 times that one line. She was like, what you saw on TV with Kimora is... I imagine exactly hearing that through is. the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Being on the other side of that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you'd be calling. There's an exorcism that we need in this hotel. Now, you also left the show as one of only a handful of queens in the history of Drag Race who's never done a legitimate sewing challenge. So yes. were you fearful of that this time around? And how do you think you would do in a sewing challenge before, obviously we can't spoil anything about the season, but heading into All Stars 8, were you like, okay, I'm gonna have to do a sewing challenge this time? I understand, like, that's like the Snatch game. Like, we all know it's coming. Yeah. It's one of those challenges mm -hmm. you know you have to know how to do. And I was fairly confident because if you watch my YouTube channel, you can see I do many different things. So I know how to sew. I actually went to school for fashion design. Yeah. Although judging from my old runways, you probably wouldn't believe that. <laughs> but like, you know, I know how to construct a garment. Mm, yes, you do. Yeah. So I wasn't scared at all. Honestly, I was excited for the idea of being able to create and be creative because mm -hmm. that's something I didn't get to do. Yeah. Now, how would you describe the runway package that you brought to um, All Stars 8? What are fans going to see from that? Let's just say my package is extra. Extra. James Extra, like Doublemint Extra, you know? Mm -hmm. It's still cheap, extra. but it's got a nice little buzzword on it. No kidding, I'm kidding. That. It's all about personality, even in the fashion. <laughs> So we also have to talk about, like I promised, your iconic role in The Who Stole Christmas. Oh, thank I mean, you. Emmy, Emmy worthy, Oscar worthy, all of the awards. It was just so great. I mean, I have submitted it. I have not heard anything back, but I guess they felt like, you know, it was necessary to reward <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge and people like that. I know. Yeah, unfortunately, Jennifer Coolidge had to take the award, but you did. <sighs> you stole that show. She's my biggest She's my biggest competition, <laughs> honestly. Have you ever met her? No. Mm, she's wonderful. Are you watching White Lotus season two? I have not, but I, just, I put my TV on in the corner and I'm just happy looking at it and knowing it's in there. Mm -hmm. Did you watch The Watcher with her in it? I did watch that. Oh, she is so <laughs> funny. I feel like she's the only person in that show operating on that camp level, and it's just, it's so funny. Um, now, Who Stole Christmas, I have to know, uh, what is the best behind the scenes story that you have from filming that? Because there was a lot of queens on that set. Ooh, best behind the scenes story. Hmm. Which ones can I actually say out loud that I can't put in the memoir and then like a dirty expose <laughs> later? That's coming, confirmed. Oh, I will say like it is now my confirmed second time being this far away from RuPaul in a mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. And I just say like, she is on point. That's one of the things that always blows me away is like as an actor, like she is just fire. Mm -hmm. Like doesn't need that many takes or anything. I was just like, wow, for being so, cause she is incredibly old. So like, she is really, really good and snappy and still like quick. Yeah, no, she definitely, yes, yeah, she definitely is. We'll take that as a compliment, I think. Um, yeah, it must be really intimidating though, like being on set with RuPaul, acting in a scene with RuPaul. Oh yeah, heaven forbid a fart or something comes, you're just sitting there just like on pins and needles like Everybody's making diamonds and they're clenched <laughs> so hard around RuPaul. Um, has there been talk of a sequel? I have to know. Um, no talks of a sequel, but I did mention to it like, it'd be great if I came back and you know, just, terrorize the town, because yeah. I was the villain in it, so I feel like it's a great, you know, revenge kind of vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, like the dressmaker, that could be fun, but Christmas oh thing. God, yes. <laughs> I would love to see a sequel, we have to speak that into existence. Like I just break into people's homes and redecorate them. Yes. That, 
Yeah, a horror, Christmas horror story right there. Great. <laughs> Also in your past, you have worked with Trixie a lot. So what is the best story that you have about Trixie from your early days of drag? Early days of drag, I have tons of stories about her. I've known her forever mm -hmm. now. Um, one thing I will say about her is it never mattered how horrible the gig was, she always took it. Like even ones I gave her, like she did a show for me once for what was clearly a for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. It seemed like an MLM that I just got onto because I wanted to like perform at a benefit. So I was like, yeah. I can only pay you like 20 bucks and they're not paying me at all, but we'll get lots of pictures taken of us. And she literally like made someone cover her shit at the steakhouse and came down and did the show with me. <laughs> like lugging her big old raggedy pink suitcase. Ugh, I love her. I feel like there was nine like fond memories in that, but also like 10 reads in that. Oh, always. <laughs> in that memory. I had to do her hair for Trixie Motel. So that was literally just me the That's whole time. Right. You did work on Trixie Motel. What was that like? That had to have been really fun. Oh, it was fun. It was like a high lesson in gaslighting, like when you had to be a hairstylist for somebody, I would sit back and like, she looks great in a ponytail. Just whisper at like in random intervals around her. The next day she'll come in like, I think I'm gonna wear a ponytail. I'm like, you do. You look so good in them. <laughs> that show was so crazy. I mean, seeing Trixie actually like hold like power tools and like bust down <laughs> walls. Did you ever get into that with her? Did you do any of the deconstruction? I did not, but she was a fool and actually knocked down a wall in full drag. So I got to see yeah. her eat and fall face forward she into it. Yeah, she did. <laughs> was she actually injured from that or was just like? I don't know, but she fell on her head. So she's fine. She's fine. Hard head. Hard head. <laughs> So I'm asking these questions to everybody on the All Stars sure. 8 cast. I want to know, you can't say yourself for this, who do you think is going to surprise the fans most in terms of their glow up on All Stars 8? In terms of their glow up, mm -hmm. I have to say probably a tie between Jessica Wilde and Monica Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Cause it's been so long since they've been on television. So mm -hmm. people don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Did you see Jessica on All Star 6 when she was a lip sync assassin? I did. She was great on that, wasn't she? She was great. Mm -hmm. And I've seen her a couple of times cause she's back and forth in Vegas and LA yeah, here. So yeah. I'm constantly seeing her. I see too much of her, honestly. <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> um, who do you think is going to surprise people most on the runway this season? Ooh, and I can't say myself? You can say yourself for this one. Oh, I can say myself? Yes, well, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. Me? Mm, yeah. My hit, like, nail caught my hair that it was a lot more seamless in my mind when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so outside of yourself, who do you think? Oh, outside of myself. I think Jimbo is always unexpected. Oh, you never yeah. know what's going to come out of her. Come out of her? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Costume, shape, smell, you never know, you never know. <laughs> Did you consult any other Rue girls who had done All-Stars before? Yes, actually, I live in Las Vegas, so like I'm constantly at shows with Coco Montrese yeah. and Alexis Mateo. Mm -hmm. And Coco knew what it was like to, you know, go home first, so I was <laughs> like, well, how did that feel? And she's just like, well, it happened. <laughs> you never know. The thing about All-Stars, they always mention to me, is like, you never know what's gonna happen because it's completely in someone else's hands. Yeah. The judges absolve themselves from any responsibility. The only way to do it. Yeah, and I have to like be mad at all my competitors if I'm at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then I also have to plead to them to make sure I can stay. It's horrible. It's a psychotic, you know, mental game. Yes. Oh, no, 100%. Everybody's face in those, like when they're doing the lipstick stuff, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I cannot even imagine being in that position. But with Alexis, did you ask her um, for advice on how to either start or defend yourself from a campaign being started? <laughs> I did not, I wish I had, honestly. Like, I wish I'm better at like forming alliances. I'm so nice, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just, I wear my heart on my sleeve, you know. So no alliances for James this season? No alliance, I'm open to friendships. Friendships? You just gotta, you gotta retitle it, you know. Alaska Talks? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of friendship. It's like when they roll out a different product, there's just a new name on it, mm -hmm. that's what it is with me. Great, great. Love friendships. The last thing I'll ask you is how do you think All Stars 8 is going to gag the fans. What can we expect from the season? The twists, the turns, the, the talent, what is coming ahead? Oh, well, I predict with All Stars 8 that there will be girls going home, there'll be eliminations, and there may even be a winner. Three things, only three things on this oh, season. Oh, and possibly guest judges. Some of them may even be celebrities. But not Mariska Hargitay. Probably not Mariska Hargitay. <laughs> I think she's busy doing SVU season 89. Yes, right, right. Well, hopefully we'll get you on season 90. Ooh, yes. I could play a dead body. <laughs> that would be great. I could yes. do that. Yes, just show them who stole Christmas and they would be like, no, not dead body, fully alive, well, charismatic. Like, I'll just do a full PowerPoint presentation. Like, see, <laughs> see this? 
Come on now. Absolutely. James, this was such a lovely interview. Thank you so much for being here, and I cannot wait to see what you do on All Stars 8. Thank you, sweetheart. Of course, of course. I change that shirt. It looks like it's cutting you up. I'm going to change it before the next interview. Yes, no, this is no more interviews than this shirt. Um, stay tuned for more with the cast of All Stars 8.